Hasanabi, aka Hassan Piker, says, American Americans are so brain broken about crime and automatically assume that lenient sentencing in our draconian, inhumane criminal justice system means that you support the crime and the criminal rather than having a restorative, rehabilitative approach centering justice. And that's like literally the most common sense, obvious, correct tweet ever. Don't agree with uh, Hassan on everything necessarily, but like, obviously that's correct, right? Uh, we are very brain broken about crime as Americans. If you talk to your average normie, a political person, um, they're going to be super gung ho when it comes to crime and punishment. At least that's my experience as someone that lives in the Midwest. Uh, a lot of times something you'll hear from people is that we don't sentence to people to jail for long enough, you know, uh, that our crime and, and justice system is not uh, intense enough, which is insane, of course, given the fact that we have one of the most punitive justice systems in any developed country, and it has directly led to the highest population that's incarcerated in the entire world. There's a pretty obvious, pretty direct link right there, as I'm sure you guys all know. Anyway, so again, pretty obvious standard tweet from Hassan here. Totally agree with what he's saying. In comes Anna, Anna Kasparian. Woo! What the fuck is this about? She says, we've seen the rehabilitative approach play out in California. If that's what you think works, we're in a lot of trouble. Uh, so she's chalking up all the issues in California. I'm, I'm, I'm sure she's assuming to the rampant homelessness, the high crime rate in cities like Los Angeles, tent cities, big you know drug problems, etc. cetera. Uh, that's all because of the rehabilitative approach uh excuse me yeah what the fuck country does she think this is for one like th this is so ridiculous and this is par for the course for anna kasperi and we roasted her a couple weeks ago uh maybe it was a few months ago at this time time's an illusion um but she had this dog shit take about how like oh the rise in crime and how dangerous it was for homeless people to be out and about and just because you might be confused because she calls herself a progressive leftist, when she said it was dangerous for homeless people to be outside, she wasn't talking about the dangers for homeless people. Okay, one of the most vulnerable, marginalized classes of people, literally people with no homes, no shelter, subject to every single ounce of the fucking elements. Uh, day like today in Kansas City, we have a, a massive homelessness problem in Kansas City, as every major city in America does that we do not deal with. Uh, and these people, you know, sure, on a 75 degree day, you might be like, well, though, you know, blah, 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 blah. how could anybody pretend that you're not at a massively vulnerable condition in rain, 40 degrees outside, all this kinds of stuff? It's like, are you fucking kidding me? This is NIMBY as shit, care and energy um, from Anna Kasparian, which is why I quote tweeted her from the Vanguard account. I was like, Karen Kasparian enters the chat because, like, this is the most ridiculous fucking thing impossible that, uh, that you you would try and maintain your progressive credentials and and it just downright pedal in right wing talking points. You think that the United States needs a more draconian, more cruel justice system? You think we're giving people slaps on the wrist? This is the most Fox News style talking points I've ever seen come from the Young Turks. Um, yeah, uh, she uh, goes down to double down, and she's like, uh, I, "There's another uh, tweet from her." Yeah. Uh, when Hannah Tubbs molested a 10-year-old in Denny's bathroom and was eventually convicted, Gascon gave her a light sentence. She bragged about getting... Like, this is all massive right-wing talking points, guys. Like, okay, do, am I simming for, like, a child molester? No. But what are you... Like, is it just... It's the only rational thing to say anybody that commits a crime has to serve forever in jail. Like, get them off of our streets. This person's dangerous. Obviously, you can take a massively incendiary, massively... uh awful grotesque crime like child molestation uh and what try and use that so we actually bring the hammer down more on regular people who get swept up in all of this this is how the right wing fundraises for the cops this is how they expand the police state they don't do it by saying like oh innocent people are out here getting swept up in all this no they take the most vile fucking figurehead uh you know in this case like a child molester who doesn't hate a perverted child molester right uh, and then you use that to crack down and make the rules more cold and oppressive in a country that already only represents 5% of the world population, but over a quarter of its fucking criminals and incarcerated. Like, that's ridiculous, guys. Come on now. Yeah, and you're absolutely right that it's a right-wing talking point. Look at exactly the playbook the GOP is rolling out right now in opposition to Biden's Supreme 
Court Justice nominee Katanji Brown Jackson trying to say, oh, she's not, she's too lenient on fucking child, you know, sex crimes and she's too lenient on crimes in general. She let too many people go, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, uh, the correct point to be making when we're living in America is that our sentences are far too long. The criminal justice system is far, far too punitive. Of course, you can cherry pick a case here or there. Of, oh, this person got off with a couple two years or uh, a couple years too many or a couple too, or sorry, a couple years uh, too little rather um, such as this you know, particular instance that Anna seems to reference down here. Um, but again, I think this is pretty outrageous to just to just straight up come out here and basically mock the approach of rehabilitative justice um, when that should basically be the entire point of a justice system. Like, what is the point of having a criminal justice system if it's not to rehabilitate criminals? Like, do you think the answer is just to lock people in a in a box and throw away the key and let them rot there and be raped and abused for the rest of their lives? Like, is that what you think a just developed society should be doing with its taxpayer money? Uh, obviously not. Rehabilitation is, or at least should be, the entire point of the criminal justice system. Obviously, that's not how it is now. In fact, it often just makes things worse. You know, people that go to prison often end up offending once again because, you know, whether they're struggling with addiction or mental health issues, those are only exacerbated by being in prison, by going through the abusive and traumatic uh, justice system as we have it set up. Uh, so again, this is just the opposite of like a leftist or sympathetic, empathetic approach to the situation. Totally blows my mind that she's just parroting these talking points. Um, and here she says, and someone says, LAO, LMAO is a satire. No, it's not. When people are getting stabbed to death at work and bus drivers are getting assaulted daily with no consequences at all, I think it's an issue. Uh, like, yeah, obviously it's an issue, but have, can, you, can you really not stop and think about what the cause of a lot of these issues are? Obviously, sane people that have their basic needs met are not out here assaulting each other. They're not out here you know, stabbing bus drivers and shit like that. And the majority of criminals, not all criminals, obviously, there are some crimes like rape, for example, which is not actually a crime of desperation. You know, some of the richest people in the world are, are serial offenders of, of that crime. Think of Harvey Weinstein, for example. That's not a guy that has any, you know, desperation. He's just a piece of shit with a lot of money and, a, and an ego complex. Um, but when it comes to most crimes, they're either a result of desperation, like you think about stealing money or stealing food, trying to feed your family, etc., you know, robbing a bank or some shit like that. Uh, or they're because of mental health issues. Again, most sane people that have their basic need met, needs met aren't out here like assaulting bus drivers or whatever the fuck. So maybe instead of cracking down more on crime, you know, putting more money into the police budgets, patrolling more areas that are impoverished, etc., maybe if instead of, you know, funding that we take those resources and fund people's ability to get their basic needs met for their ability to get an actual job that will fulfill them and keep them you know busy during the day uh something to get some money in their pocket so they can feed themselves and their family some treatment for their mental issues which are absolutely ravaging the country and of course we can't forget that during the pandemic not only did mental health issues go up but also addiction in general drug abuse alcoholism etc all of these issues which are only exacerbating these problems which anna's prescription for is just cracking down more like rudy giuliani would say yeah, this is so weird because, you know, I I mean, like, obviously, since this channel's inception, I've pretty much had many massive disagreements with Anna Kasparian, but it almost seems like this is a hardcore philosophy shift, right? Like, if you are not understanding that much, I, I, obviously, you can find some fringe cases of people who are just, you know, fucking gone, right? Uh, that's, that's what the right wing loves to do. But by and large, Gavin, you're 100% correct that these are crimes of resources they're out of fear the the fucking uh you know cortisol levels in your brains are on fire because you're stressed all the time and uh you're not thinking clearly and that creates like a uh, fucking mental health crisis uh you know and that's what causes people to lash out and do dumb shit i'm not simping for people who stab others to death uh on the bus but is that happening like every day in fucking la like i don't think so i i would be shocked uh, that, oh, yeah, you could just stab your bus driver and get away with it. Those people aren't going to fucking receive any punishment. You just It's like GTA 5. You just run up, stab the bus driver, get the fuck out of there, man. Nobody's coming for you. Nobody's looking for you. I have a hard time believing that's the way it is in America. Like, California hasn't been the Wild West in, I don't know, 150 fucking years. Okay? 
But Richie Uppies, like Anna Kasparian, love to make it seem like it's hell on earth over there where it's 75 degrees all the time. And, you know, you have to be rich as shit or poor as shit. Those are your two options in Los Angeles. You know, I don't know. I, I somehow, somehow I just don't believe that the poors are the problem. Right. Like I thought that if we were leftists, we kind of understood that there were systemic structures that play here, that, yes, we have free will, but there's a lot that manipulates us. OK. And those things are put in place by our government. They want to create a criminal element. They want to have a subjugated class. OK. Like where did any kind of that analysis go from the Young Turks? Like, where is it? Uh, Gavin, you've been a longer listener than me, but I have to believe at least at some point through some of the rhetoric that I've heard these people say that they would have been able to put out such a fucking, you know, entry level progressive argument like, you know, hey, guy, I'm talking to my dad's friend who's a conservative and he tells me, no, man, black people are just more violent. Look how many black people got arrested in Kansas City versus how many white people case closed like hello right, no that person is a racist and i would tell them about all the structural fucking inequality that create over policing in black neighborhoods that create a you know a disproportionate allocation of resources i could show numbers too guy but it seems like she's just willing to peddle in this kind of conservative nonsense which is fucking hilarious because her favorite thing to do is criticize jimmy Dore for peddling in conservative nonsense so i just think that this is all fucking hilarious and also, Gavin, just so you are aware, I did verify Madeline Albright did fucking die. And I think it's kind of a coincidence that I found that out while we were doing the story on Anna Kasparian, who, of course, once referred to it as quite an honor to interview the secretary of state and many describe as a war criminal. Yeah, Jesus Christ, what perfect timing. At first, I thought you all were like trolling in the chat. Uh, war criminal Madeline Albright just passed away. Uh, in fact, she did. In fact, she is dead as fuck. Like we got a little bit of heat when we put out that video that you referenced, Zach, about her discussing anti-homelessness comments from a while ago. I don't remember exactly what people's pushback was, but essentially some were saying that, uh, you know, like you guys were being unfair. Like she obviously doesn't actually believe this stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think that we were 100 percent correct and that we've now been 100 percent vindicated. By the way, look at this cringy ass shit. This is from august of 2021 i'm glad our show has improved since then but uh yeah these were the comments um and and yeah i think we've been totally vindicated we can listen to this real quick uh in light of the the new tweets she has out uh but yeah ignore my fucking visage in this uh old clip but yeah I do think that there are progressive progressives i don't know if it's progressive policy but progressives in places like California who have made terrible decisions. And so one of those terrible decisions is essentially doing away with anti camping laws, right? Allowing people to camp out wherever they want, whenever they want. And if like we have a homeless problem in California, we have it all throughout the country, but it's particularly bad in California. And so the argument is, well, if there isn't public housing available for people, they should be allowed to camp out. Okay, but there's also a problem right now where there is public housing available and individuals will say, no, I don't wanna take it. I don't wanna follow the rules in the public housing. And so as a result- I gotta I'm jump in here. Out. I gotta, I can't Just listen to this. I can't, I can't listen to that without jumping in here. That shit- <laughs> fucking makes my blood boil do you know what kind of shit that they're talking about they want you to live like a grown-up in summer camp at these fucking places it's like oh be here at this time go here at this time it's like hello i'm a grown man that's homeless i'm not a fucking child you don't get to treat me like i'm a fucking prisoner yeah that's why those people don't want to fucking go there and also that's a it, it, the people that i'm speaking specifically for the people who do not want to choose that also by and large fuck that talking point so many people are desperate for public housing OK, you look at a place like Kansas City, right? We are not the worst. We're not L.A. Like Gavin and I love it here because it's like the last bastion of affordability. We would not be able to get by on our show income in a place like L.A. or New York City. Right. It wouldn't be possible. Um, but we still have a massive homeless problem here because the the all across the country, because uh, and this is a quick tangent, but because uh, Wall Street has had like basically zero dollar interest rate, zero percent interest rates. Right. And they've been able to buy um houses from underneath home buyers right all across the country uh so it, the average apr for a home buyer if you're fucking fortunate and you have good credit and you've been responsible and maybe you know had your parents help you a little bit four per, four percent apr on a mortgage four percent interest over on a uh what's it uh 10 over 30 or however the fuck mortgages work right um 
So what people have, what's been happening is uh, Wall Street fuckers, the tycoons, will go in. They'll give you $50,000 over the asking price. They'll waive all of your closing cost fees, and they'll just take care of everything for you. Uh, so, of course, people are going to sell their homes to them, but then regular people can't buy homes. So what happens to those people? They're forced into the rental market, right? Because after the 2008 financial crash, the, all of the low and middle and working class families across the country lost their access to like owning their homes. So now they're all renters. And now guess what's considered an affordable fucking unit in Kansas City? Like an $800 uh, fucking studio apartment, okay? You can't raise a fucking family on... Uh, in a 600 square foot fucking studio apartment you just fucking can't do it you're lucky if you get 600 uh, square feet for 800 dollars. i know gavin rented a studio that was pretty small that was pretty fucking expensive uh for the price of it right um and if you don't have roommates or you're new to a town that's not really an option or if you're raising a family and you don't you know you don't want to have strangers living with your kids like we should have options for these people and it's so fucked up because i, I was talking to one of my homies that actually does own their own home uh, they bought it during the pandemic, and I found out that their mortgage is like $800, and they have like a four-bedroom house. And I'm like, what the fuck does that happen? Because you get a way better deal on your monthly mortgage than you do on rent. And like, you know, I'm not saying that it's wrong, that, you know, $800 is perfectly reasonable to pay for your mortgage, right? But I'm like, holy shit, that just is not the same as, um, it's not the same as like renting, you know, or, you know, you have to spend so much more money to rent a house for, you know, with three bedrooms or whatever.